This is video of Antle leaving court in July at the Florence Federal Courthouse. He was indicted in June on charges related to wildlife trafficking as well as money laundering. He's also facing charges of money laundering of more than half a million dollars in an indictment filed in early June. The feds say that Antle's trying to sell off his assets and transfer animals at Myrtle Beach Safari that he owns. Antle's lawyer says that's the farthest thing from the truth. And today's court hearing was much ado about nothing. The government, um, you know, really kind of overstepped their bounds. And, um, and I would say that the court saw that and said this is not the proper uh, court to be uh, trying to stop the, you know, this action that was taking place. And, um, and you know, I hate that we had to come and, and do this and, and spend a whole nother day in court because it was a waste of time on, for everybody, in my opinion. Federal prosecutors disagree and say they could file another motion to address the matter. In the meantime, the judge told Antle he has to notify the court if he sells any property or transfers any animals at his safari. Now that this hearing is over, Antle's lawyer is questioning the timing of this second indictment. Doc Antle walked out of the Florence Federal Courthouse with a woman and straight into a black SUV. I asked him for a statement on the case against him. Did you want to say anything, Mr. Antle? No, ma'am. So Wednesday's much. hearing involved charges against Antle and four others in a second indictment filed two weeks ago. That indictment involves wildlife trafficking and money laundering. Antle's lawyer, Ryan Beasley, says they knew exactly what to expect during the brief hearing. But these charges are from like four years ago. So you, and, uh, you, you, it makes you wonder why they waited four years to bring these charges. Um, and it makes you also, you know, want to think about, you know, how all this came about and what's pushing it. The first indictment filed in early June accuses Antle and his business partner, Andrew John Sawyer, of laundering more than $500,000 in cash. The criminal complaint says the money is believed to be the proceeds of an operation to smuggle illegal immigrants across the Mexican border to the United States. Beasley says Antle is not guilty and they're ready to prove their case. These are little... Uh, little technical issues that the government is trying to get him on and uh, we look forward to having our day in court. Rising food prices are hitting hard here at home. The manager at the Low Country Food Bank says since 2018, Horry County has seen a 47% increase in residents who are in need of food. Heather Singleton says she started working at the food bank right around the start of the pandemic. Since then, she says she's seen an increase in people seeking food assistance, and many of them are people who've never had to ask for help before. We see a lot of families um, who are working. It, it's not that there's not jobs in the household, but just with the inflation and supply chain issues, the prices of food continuing to rise. Just having a job sometimes isn't enough to feed their family. According to the USDA, in 2021, it cost an average of $62.50 per person for a week of food. Singleton says here in Horry County, more than 53,000 people are in need of food, and many people don't even know how to go about seeking help. A lot of phone calls just asking for advice on where to go, what type of information they need to bring, and just in general, what is available. The food bank is also working hard to reach underserved communities. For food resources everywhere to every segment of the population and try to break down those barriers to, to getting food to every, every segment of the population. We have a couple of monthly distributions that we do that are specifically for the Latinx community. One of the ways they're knocking down barriers is to provide bilingual support staff at food distribution events and putting out event announcements in Spanish. Singleton tells me that just last month, the Low Country Food Bank sent out 740,000 pounds of food. She says that number is lower than it should be and should look more like 858,000 pounds. So she says there's a lot of hungry people in our county. 
Singleton says some other factors in increasing food insecurity in Horry County are a rise of rent and the transient population. And it's not just Horry County feeling the pinch of higher grocery prices. Feeding America reports that in 2020, the most recent data set available, Marlboro County has the highest rate of food insecurity in the state at 17.5%. Florence, Dillon, Marion, and Darlington are all also above 10%. And for North Carolina, the stats show Robeson County at 18.8% and Scotland County at 20.4%.